Good afternoon and welcome to CMC Markets and this Monday market update. Look at the week ahead on the 3rd of April. And it's been a fairly quiet start to the week. We saw European stocks close the quarter in a rather subdued fashion. But it doesn't change the fact that we've still seen a fairly positive start to the year. But before I start looking at the week ahead, Let's first and foremost get a little bit of the housekeeping rules out of the way, a risk warning. Um, anything that I talk about today shouldn't be taken or shouldn't be construed as direct trading advice. What I'm going to be doing is highlighting key levels, potentially directional indicators in terms of what I think might happen, certainly not what I think will happen because I'm probably as right as often as I'm wrong. It's all about managing risk. Um, and trying to mitigate any losses and try and maximise any profits using various trading rules that I generally found tend to work fairly well over the course of the past 20 to 25 years in my time trying to analyse the vagaries of financial markets. So basically just getting these risk warnings out of the way. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to direct them or reply to this message that I've just sent out over the chat facility. More than happy to answer any questions with respect to what I think an ASEC class might do, not what I think that it will do, because there are no um, there are no certainties when it comes to financial markets. Um, but I think what I will be certainly looking at this week is the potential for the move a move higher or lower in the dollar because it's going to be a big week for the dollar and I think the direction of the dollar is likely to dictate where markets go to next. What I certainly have seen is despite the fact that we've seen very strong movements higher in stock markets, the German DAX is, appro is approaching a very key resistance level um, from the previous peaks in 2015 we can see that here on this daily chart and there is also some evidence that US markets are starting to look how shall I say it a little bit tired um, we've obviously seen some decent gains over the course of the past few weeks and months on the back of the Trump rally but what I have seen or what I have noticed is that Mr. Trump isn't having it all his own way. And I think an awful lot of the rally that was uh, that we've seen over the course of the past few weeks has been predicated on the fact that he probably would. That doesn't now appear to be the case. And the th I think the things that I'm looking at this week are really, I think, is the Trump reflation trade starting to wear off. Certainly in the context of bond markets there does appear to be some evidence that bond prices do appear to be bottoming out and yields appear to be starting to tail off. The inflation picture is looking a little bit mixed now. There is some evidence that the upward price pressure that we've been seeing in terms of prices on the CPI measure is starting to level off a little bit. We certainly, we certainly saw it in those CPI numbers out of the European Union on Friday when we saw a big decline on headline CPI from 2% in February to 1.5% in March and that's taken a little bit of the sting I think out of the Euro. It's certainly taken a look at it, it's taken a little, with, little bit of the wind out of the Euro sales and I think that has helped also push the DAX higher. But before we get too bullish on the DAX, we do have to look at where the DAX is in relation to where it was in 2015. It's all time highs there. Also corresponds, these all time highs in the DAX also corresponded with the lows that we saw in the Euro at around about 103.50. So 103.50-104 coincides with all-time highs on DAX. Now the Euro is looking a little bit weak but the big question is how much more downside is there in the Euro? We've run out, we're starting to run up against resistance around about that 12,390 level. So we do have to be a little bit careful about 
potentially taking on new long positions on the DAX when you're pushing a pushing up against significant all-time highs. So that could, in the short term, limit the downside in Euro dollar, limit the upside in the German DAX. So we do need to be very, very aware of that correlation between the two. If we look at the Euro dollar, we can, we can see a similar sort of scenario playing out. Look at where the all-time not quite the all-time lows, but the, the previous lows on the DAX in 2015 coincided with the all-time highs on the DAX. Now, we are slightly below that and have been slightly below that at the end of 2016 when we get went as low as 103.50. But nonetheless, we've rebounded quite strongly off that. Now, on a weekly chart, we have very, we've seen a very strong bearish weekly reversal. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to push strongly lower because we saw a similar sort of bearish reversal here back at the end of January and we only saw a modest move lower. So you, always, you also need to factor in the context of the move higher. We've seen a rebound off those lows at 103.50. We saw a modest weekly reversal which took us lower for two or three weeks in a row before we rebounded again. We are at a very, what I would call, a, an indecisive moment in the context of the euro dollar. And ultimately, we've only seen three, four positive weeks in a row. We've seen very one strong negative week. But ultimately, what we're seeing here is what I would argue is a potential sideways consolidation within a triangular formation. We do have a trend line coming in from the lows that we saw at the beginning of the year and that comes in around about 105.80 so I think while we're below this 50 day moving average here and this resistance at around about 107.20 then I think the downside in euro dollar is likely to be limited to around about 105.80 in the short to medium term that's really as short or long term as you can make it. If we look at the four hour chart again we can see a very strong thrust lower. We are trading around about the lows that we've seen over the past few weeks but again we are looking oversold on the four hour chart. Downside is likely to be limited to around about 105.80. Dollar upside is also likely to be fairly limited by the way that the dollar index is trading as well. For me the price is all important here and the price is suggesting that there is euro weakness but I don't think it's going to drop sharply. We can see that borne out by this dollar index chart here. So this is the dollar index. We've got solid support around about 99. Uh, these series of lows through here. We did have a brief thrust lower there but we did get a fairly decently bullish turnaround at the beginning of last week. We pushed higher. We're starting to push against the highs of the week. We could potentially push a little bit higher, but we're then pushing against this trend line resistance from the peaks that we saw at the beginning of this year. And this sort of coincides with those lows that we saw in Euro dollar. We have to bear in mind that in terms of the dollar index, Euro dollar makes up around about 57-58% of that. So if you're looking at the dollar index, you're also looking at an almost a mirror-like comparison with respect to Euro dollar. So keep an eye on that trend line resistance there. It sort of coincides with trend line support in Euro dollar at around about 105.80. So there's a decent correlation there. These charts aren't telling me that the Euro is going to collapse anytime soon or the dollar is going to surge. So that therefore brings me into the context of what the UK 100 or the FTSE 100 is looking to do. And that gives us a slightly altogether different picture. But once again, it also tells us that ultimately it's looking a little bit toppy above 7,400. But it's also looking well supported around about 72.50. And that sort of then presupposes that ultimately we're likely to remain within a broad range for the pound against the dollar. Having said that, I still think there's potentially more upside in sterling dollar than there is 
in euro dollar and the reasoning behind that is because the cable chart is looking slightly more impulsive in terms of a potential breakout up or down now what do I mean by that well if we look at the continuation pattern or cart back to the continuation pattern in euro dollar it's not as conclusive as say for example the continuation pattern that we've got here in the cable chart now let's let's just put to one side all of these other lines moving averages and what have you here let's look at this top line here from the December highs and link those highs through here and also look at the lows from the beginning of the year now this is potentially a triangular consolidation now ultimately triangular consolidations tend to be trend supportive that doesn't necessarily mean that they will break out in the direction of the prior trend. The prior trend at the moment is down. We can see that quite clearly from the move down from the June highs to the lows that we saw in July August back to the levels that we saw here. But ultimately what we're seeing here is there's a decision process going on here with respect to the pound against the dollar. The decision making process is likely to be dictated by the interest rate convergence or divergence that we're seeing with respect to the pound against the dollar. Now for this I'm talking my book a little bit. I think the pound is likely to break higher not lower. Why? Why? Simply because I think the pound is very much predicated on a one-way bet. We're getting an awful lot of predictions that the pound is going to be around 110, 106 by the end of the year. It's, it's, it's very very difficult to find anyone who thinks that it's going to go up. And that, for one, makes me very, very cautious about being overly short of it. If you're going to go, if you're going to be short of it, obviously it's sensible to be short of it near the top end of the recent range. The top end of that recent range is between 126 and a half and 127. So if you get a break through 127, your stop loss really needs to be at 127 and a half or 128. But look at the interest rate differentials for the pound against the dollar between US and UK rates. If we blow that out to maximum the pound against the dollar has never been in terms of interest rate differentials this wide it's never been this wide since th since date goes back to 1985 86 that to me suggests that it's very very stretched 1.27 basis points and that sort of begs the question as to whether or not it can get any wider which then be feeds into the debate as to whether or not the Fed can afford to hike rates any further than it already has we've already seen two rate hikes in the space of three months can we see a third can we see a fourth ultimately it also then begs the question what does that mean for Bank of England interest rate policy going forward now at the moment the markets pricing in the likelihood that obviously UK rates are at 0.25 percent, US rates are around about 1 percent. So you've got an interest rate differential, an upper band of 1 percent. The interest rate differential there is therefore 75 basis points. The market's pricing in 1.27 percent. So I would argue that the market is already pricing in at least another two Fed rate rises between now and the end of the year, certainly in the context of the 10 year yield. Is that viable? It really depends on whether or not you buy into the Fed or the Trump reflation trade. Now let's let's focus on the fact that the Trump reflation trade is predicated on a significant tax reform, significant structural investment, structural reform, and also a health care reform, none of which have happened yet, and all of which continue to appear problematic. So how much of the reflation trade needs to be priced back out and how much is already priced in and that's always a very difficult line to to try and well, it's, a, it's an always a difficult accommodation to make but certainly in the context of this chart here the we have got solid resistance at the 200 day moving average which would appear to suggest that there's big resistance around about 126.30 126.40 Good support around about 123.80, 123.90. Therefore, that is your range until such times as we break through 127, get above the 200-day moving average, and break above or break out of this triangular consolidation. If we break out 
of this triangular consolidation, then your potential target is 128, 130 in the, over the course of the next few trading sessions. But until such times as we break out of that triangular consolidation, then the range trade is the sensible trade to make. So at the moment, the likelihood is we're going to trade 123, 90, 126 with a bias to continue that until such times we break and close above close above the 200 day moving average at the moment the 50 and the 100 day are trading sideways or looking a little bit flat so there's very little viability in that for me these are the two key levels here on the top side if we break through them then we could see an explosive move towards 130 and potentially even higher why because everyone is positioned to be short of sterling so that is the risky side of the trade at the moment there's also another factor feeding into my slightly more positive sterling story and that's euro sterling we are still showing a significant reluctance to push higher on euro sterling now this month the ECB the European Central Bank is tapering its bond purchase program from 80 billion euros a month to 60 so there's been an awful lot of speculation that we could get an increased taper as we head into year-end those recent soft inflation numbers that we saw at the end of last week particularly from Germany and the EU suggest that it's probably not likely despite the fact that we saw very strong PMI numbers out this morning from Germany in particular 58.3 but we also saw some fairly strong numbers from Italy as well as France Spain was slightly soft but nonetheless the weak inflation or the weaker than expected inflation numbers mean that it's likely that the debate about an increased taper is likely to lose a little bit of impetus in the short to medium term so at the moment for euro sterling we're finding a little bit of resistance at around about 85.30 85.50 that's what I've put in my morning note that's this resistance level here you can see that in the chart forum right here so I try and update these once a day euro sterling sterling dollar dollar yen and euro dollar so we've pushed below 85.50 we're looking for a retest of the lows around about 84 but before we get there we've got this trend line support coming in at around about 84 and a half here but overall looking at how euro sterling has behaved over the course of the past month or so the bias remains towards the downside resistance at 84.50 and then further resistance here at 86.05 86.10 this is all about levels this is all about highs and lows it's no more sophisticated than that and ultimately we've we've have we have found support around about 84.80 if we we need to really get back above this 86 level to diminish the downside pressure that we've seen over the course of the past few trading sessions and that's borne out by the, the, the charts that I that I've put in there. Also ties in with dollar yen. Slightly weaker dollar index, but we've also found that dollar yen um, continues to find the air a little bit thin above 112. And again it's a similar sort of story here. It's about levels at the moment we're in a little bit of what I would call a congestion zone need to get back through 111.60 to retest this 112.40 area here um, but overall there is there remains solid support just above 110 so I still am of the opinion that we could retest 110 but for that to unfold we need to stay below 112.40 so the bias for me on dollar yen still remains to sell into rallies and then chop them out if we go much above 112 and a half that is the bias for me I'm, I'm still of the opinion that dollar strength will continue to diminish over the course of the past over, over the course of the next few trading sessions and a lot of that will depend obviously on this week's US data now last week we saw US consumer confidence come out at the strongest level since 2000 17 year high what is surprising about that is that it's not really been reflected in personal spending or retail sales so you've got consumer confidence telling us one thing 
and you've got US retail sales telling us another. And for me, retail sales are probably more important than consumer confidence. You can ask as many people as you like how confident they feel about um, the future with respect to uh, their the outlook for their finances. But ultimately, it's whether or not they spend that money. And for me, hard data is better than confidence surveys or anything like that. To, to my mind, confidence surveys are you know it's like reading tea leaves they're not that reliable I prefer to look at the hard data and the hard data tells me that we've seen a little bit of a rebound here but ultimately for me we need to see a significant rebound through 112 and a half dollar strength the data needs to support the confidence and at the moment they're diverging now we have got ISM manufacturing later today at 3 p.m. that should point to a continued resilience in the manufacturing sector but in the Chicago PMI that we saw on Friday we saw a very weak employment component so I'll be particularly interested in the, in the employment components of not only the US ISM manufacturing number that's due out today but also the non-manufacturing number that's due out on Wednesday because that should give us a decent steer as to how strong Friday payroll numbers will be and if we have a strong payrolls number that will obviously feed into a narrative of potentially a June Fed rate rise now some of the heat has come out of that debate in the context of some comments made by William Dudley of the New York Fed on Friday and there are a number of Fed policy makers who aren't comfortable with a very steep um, trajectory of US Fed rate rises on the basis of the fact that ultimately they don't want to see a significant divergence of monetary policy at a time when the strong dollar could act as a headwind for US growth it's about managing expectations and on, fr on Wednesday we get the latest Fed minutes and I think one of the surprises of the March Fed rate rise was the fact that the Fed left its inflation forecasts and its growth forecasts unchanged so they hiked rates but they remained fairly sanguine about the trajectory for US GDP growth and US inflation growth and I think the Fed minutes will give us an indication as to whether or not there was consensus on that guidance with respect to the dot plots and the inflation forecasts or whether or not the Fed is concerned that the the inflation forecast may be a little bit weaker than they are anticipating and they thought they'd get the Fed rate rise out of the way and then hold hold a waiting brief until the autumn and potentially hike rates again in September I think we'll get another Fed rate rise this year I'm just not convinced that we'll get another two um, so that'll mean so that's, that for me I think means that this week's payroll numbers are going to be very key I think they're going to come in weaker at around about 175 176 we'll get a clue on that on Wednesday with the ADP payrolls numbers which come out at 115 but the big question is will wage growth continue to pick up because for me that still remains a, that still remains a little bit on the weaker side but if we get a a weaker than expected payrolls number and a pickup in wage growth I think that will be more important than, than the actual payrolls number itself so looking at the Fed minutes on Wednesday but also looking at the wage growth numbers on payrolls on Friday and see whether or not there's a significant pickup in wage growth over and above the general minimum wage increases that we generally tend to see at the beginning of the year which tend to skew the numbers and I think that's the key here at the beginning of the year you tend to get a pickup in wage growth because minimum wage increases tend to pick up they tend to skew the numbers upwards but they need to be sustained and at the moment I'm not convinced of that and you can certainly see that in the context of what US 10-year Treasury prices are doing if we look at the prices of this chart here we can see that these are the bottom for yields prices move inversely to yields higher prices lower yields we still remain below the lows for 2017 in terms of yields so we we remain in a little bit of a sweet spot where yields are concerned inflation expectations are probably softening a little bit 
which means that the prospect of higher prices in the short term is not going to be as dollar supportive as say for example it was in December and in March and now this is when the Fed hiked rates here and here since the Fed hiked rates on both occasions yields softened yields softened so the likelihood is this is going to continue to play out so don't just naturally assume that because the market thinks the Fed's going to hike rates that yields are going to soften that's not certainly not been the case or see yields are going to go up get my get my uh, narrative the right way around every time the Fed's hike rates yields have come off this is the peak in yields here and here on both occasions yields have softened so I expect that to continue which means that the dollar index is likely to continue to trade sideways and that could in turn push the euro or underpin the euro and help push this the pound higher against the dollar so we've looked at euro dollar euro dollar resistance is around about 107.20 that is really a key level for me going higher we've already talked about the pound against the dollar it's been up for three weeks in a row three weekly closes in a row that's its best run incidentally um, for quite some time if we look at how the pound has performed over the course of the past few trading sessions the last time it closed higher three weeks in a row was probably all the way back at the beginning of 2016 here and then and then in August and then it went for a run to the downside so gonna be keeping an eye as to whether or not we can actually close higher for a fourth week in a row the other thing that's making me cautious about the dollar is what gold prices are doing gold prices generally tend to come off quite significantly if there's any significant chance that the dollar is going to sell off and we are finding significant resistance at the moment on gold 200 day moving average 1260 but we're not coming crashing off and that suggests to me that ultimately I th the market is suspicious that the, the, the current rebound in the dollar doesn't appear to have any significant legs the gold, gold prices aren't coming crashing off having said that they're finding resistance around about 1250 1260 the downside I think in any gold sell-off is likely to come in at this level around here 1220 in the short term let's look at this on a four-hour chart see whether or not we've got any clues through here and we can see there's a little bit of support coming in around about 1240 let's extend that back through there so you've got 1240 support 1239 on a short-term basis we are finding that the lows are getting a little bit lower through there so if gold drops below 1239.80 1239.75 then we could well get a little run to the downside to around about 1230 just looking at that nice little consolidation through there so overall on a long-term basis I'm bullish on gold but that doesn't mean that we can't drift down through 1239 towards 1220 in the short term before then going back up again so it's all about perspectives your long-term perspective and your short-term perspective so short-term potentially bearish for a move to 1240 and even 1220 but long-term we take the long-term chart through here we can see that the longer-term uptrend for gold prices still remains intact in a fairly similar fashion as it does for say for example euro dollar and the pound against the dollar so we can see that we can come to two different conclusions depending on the time frame for a particular asset class um, let's have a quick look at the Aussie dollar because that's come under quite considerable pressure over the course of the past few trading sessions last week I talked about this bearish engulfing week since then we have come lower rebounded and are now looking to potentially come back to 75 I, th I still think that the Aussie dollar has got potential to come a little bit lower yes that does mean that um, that, that certainly does sort of fly in the face of some of the recent recent data that we've seen but the Aussie does look a little bit on the soft side we've had three successive down days let's look at the weekly chart here 
but again we're in a range currencies at the moment are fairly benign but ultimately I expect the view of the Australian dollar economy to show a little bit of a softening that's borne out by slightly weaker commodity prices as well the copper prices um, that we talked about last week they've continued to remain a little bit under pressure from last week that's likely to weigh on the Australian economy and the fact that the data that we saw out of Australia overnight was slightly on the weaker side and that's likely to keep the RBA on a fairly dovish outlook going forward and that's likely to weigh on the Aussie as well looking for on the support basis for the Aussie dollar this low here at around about 75.80 on a short term basis bring us back down to this these these March lows back here at around around about 74.90 in the short to medium term going to finish up with crude oil have a quick look at that and I talked about this a little bit last week this area around about 53 but also the 50 day moving average could well cap any further advances we did see a nice little rally last week uh, on Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday at the moment we are below the peaks of last week but also this peak here so you're looking around about 53 and a half 54 now we've heard an awful lot from OPEC members about um, the po potential for extending the output freeze beyond June they'll probably continue to talk that up but US rig counts continue to rise so for me I think we're still in a range the bottom of that range is around about fifty dollars a barrel on Brent and the mid range is around about 54 55 and then above that 57 but if we look at WTI we can see that um, here we're running into resistance at around about fifty and a half fifty one dollars a barrel so keep an eye out for the correlations between the two there there is a little bit of probably further upward momentum there but keep an eye on the 50 day moving average because I think the 50 day moving average on not only Brent but WTI could act as a little bit of a break on any rebound higher before we drift back down again so that's crude oil looking a little bit toppy at current levels could go a little bit higher but ultimately I don't expect it to go much above $51 a barrel for WTI okay so um, also got to bear in mind with respect to the Trump trade that uh, Donald Trump will be meeting the Chinese Premier Xi, Xing, Xi, Xi Jinping later this week at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida and he's already indicated that those talks could be difficult in inverted commas so any prospect of that meeting may be more adversarial than it need be could well actually impact on risk assets and cause a little bit of a, a downward move in US indices and I'm going to finish up by looking at the S&P 500 looking at the daily chart here had a nice little rebound off the 50 day moving average had a little bit of a reversal on Friday but ultimately looking at 2370 on the upside on the S&P keep an eye out on that level as a key resistance level there if we break through there then we'll be looking at potentially a move to 2380 finding a bit of resistance there but ultimately I expect 2350 2380 on the wide of the S&P in the short to medium term as we head in to as we head, as we look towards non-farm payrolls on Friday now if you want to listen in to non-farm payrolls on Friday please feel free to sign up right here it's a non-farm payrolls live coverage registration page you can find that on learn webinars and events and then click on non-farm payrolls there Colin and myself will be covering the data release live um, 115 on Friday look forward to seeing you all there otherwise um, thanks very much for listening I'll be posting this on YouTube um, later this afternoon so you, if you have any questions 
I'll speak to you all on Friday and hopefully uh, you can join me and Colin on Friday for non-farm payrolls. Thanks very much for listening guys and speak to you all on Friday. Thanks a lot.